Okay, now, the important part. This is tenderloin. So up the backbone, which you can see here, just run your knife. The bones, you can wiggle right out and in of each bone. Just, I'm going in about that deep with my knife. About inch and a half. Again, just cut nice and easy, follow it. This is really good meat, so don't waste very much. Follow the bone again, just go a little bit deeper. You can feel the bone, just wiggle it across with your knife and you'll feel it. And see how it's loosening up in there? Open it up a little bit so you can see. And that should be about the depth of it right there. Now, turn your knife sideways up at this end. There's a set of bones that run right up here. Once you, uh, once I take this off, you'll see what I mean. So, there. So just run your knife in there again. A little bit deeper, nice and gentle. You don't want to cut through those bones because that's your strip loin steaks on the other side. Or New York steaks. And you see what's happening there? And on here, I'm just going to loosen that off a little bit. Run your knife down to the bone, nice and gentle. Down to the bone. That. And it should pretty much all come off. So that's a piece of tenderloin. There, so there's a piece of tenderloin. So let's cut it. If you want, you can cut it. Can you see me there or not? So a piece of tenderloin. This is not dried right out, so that's still good. You can leave that on there. It's just dried. If it's kind of really blacky dry, then cut it off. Same way as I took that little skin off. So they're lengthways. Cut them across. That's called fillet, if you uh, were to buy it in the store. So you can cut them whatever thickness you want. Meat them again, about whatever, one inch thick. Something like that. Slice down, keep the pressure on, and pull it back. Otherwise, it'll open the meat up in two places. You won't get an even cut. If you got enough pressure with your knife, you can probably cut right through almost all of it, except for that little end. Some nice looking steaks. So just pressure down, slice, slice. That little tail, I just leave it the way it is. So these are steaks, well, or uh, fillets, I should say, fillet steaks. We'll wrap these up later with that stuff. Don't mix them up with the stew if you're piling them all up. So let's take out the other tenderloin. I guess I'm showing you bad habits. Let's do it this way. So just wiggle around the bone. You'll feel the knuckle go up where every vertebrae is. You can see it there. Just wiggle around. Keep your knife fairly straight. It'll follow the bone. About inch, inch and a half so in the first cut. Then just go over it again. Hold it back. You can see in there if you want. Wiggle it out close to the bone. Now these bones go up again that way. So take your knife again, put it in almost the length of the knife, maybe about half to three quarters of the knife. Run it along these bones. Just feel. Feel with the bones, go slow. Cut it off again, lift it up a little bit. Now I'm running about that much of my knife along the next section. And again, same thing, just pulling softly out, run that part with that section, and again, till you get it off, along that section, loosen it all off, watch your fingers, you're getting pretty close to the knife, if you're like me, and there you got 
Another piece of tenderloin. Now, what do we do with this one? Well, let's pull that little side piece off the same. You'll see it. Pull it, it'll just come off. Don't pull too hard, though. You'll rip it right apart. Rip the good meat apart. Then just cut that edge off. And you don't have to take this off either. Only if you want. There we go. You could, this is actually very tender meat here, too. It's part of the tenderloin if you want it to be. But we'll just make it into hamburger this time. Little hair. A little more hamburger. Again, you can see the edge. This is where it's aging. The more you age it, the more of that you'll get, the drier it'll be, and the less edible it will be. If you notice, if you, when you were gutting it, sometimes a lot of people slice into this. So I'm just going to trim that edge off, and I'm going to, because that's still good meat, so I'm not going to do, I'm going to put that into stew. You can see how tender it is, you just rip it apart. Some nice stew meat made with my fingers. Now, this part here, we're just going to trim up a little bit more. A little bit of that fat off there. Hamburger again. And this piece, I'm going to leave a hole. That way I can roast it if I want. And this part would be actually a Chateaubriand if you were making a nice fancy dish. But I'm going to leave it whole. And the reason I do that, I do that with the strip loins too is that I can cut it into steaks if I want later at any thickness or I can roast it if I want to have a nice roast and then slice it later. Your choice. Okay, same piece of meat. Or uh, same primal piece of meat. This is the strip loin. Now if I wanted, I could leave this in the piece still which I just might do for now and take it off later. I could let it age more on there. But it's probably tender enough. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take one side of it off just to show you. So you can take this knife if you want. There's the backbone just like we did on that cross rib on that uh, shoulder. Run your knife down there. Just expose it. Don't try and get fancy going too deep or anything like that. Just cut it. This is probably, well not probably it is the second or third best depending if you like New York steaks or if you like ribeyes. So a prime rib is a ribeye which is off the front quarter. This is a New York steak off the strip loin which is the hind quarter. So just run nice and gently again with that. I'm just loosening it off to the backbones there. Now what I would normally do is cut this other side at the same time and then flip it. but I think I might just leave that piece in let it age a little bit. You can pull this part off too if you want right now. Or you can pull it off later. Or you can leave it on. But it's a pretty tough little skin. So more than likely, let's just peel it and pull it off. Just be careful when you're cutting. Again. Loosen it. Pull it. Pull it. Pull it. Be careful where your knife is when you're pulling. Just cut through the top of it actually. Then it should pretty much come right off. There's different ways you can do that too, but that's one way. Pull this off, so now we're going to go after the actual strip one. Which what I'll do is I'm going to attack it from the top end here. So I'm going to run my knife. This is the steak knife. Actually I'll just use the bony knife in case you don't have one. So just run that along the side of your ribs right along the side of the ribs. 
Hopefully you can see that. I'll just pop this in a little bit. Okay, again, this knife, just loosen those ribs off. The meat off the ribs, I should say. Okay, and then this part is going to go along those other, that edge of those little bones where that tenderloin came out of. Yeah, so just loosen off the side of the ribs. Do the front part first where the ribs are if you want. Working along all those ribs. Don't forget they curve in. You don't want to... So just cut again about maybe an inch at a time. Then you're going to come to the, the backbone. It's going to have a little a hump on it right there. So you've got to go over that hump and then it'll take you right to the backbone. So just feel it and you'll know what I mean. Over the little hump of the backbone. Now, this are those little ribs where the tenderloin came out of. They're also there, but they're kind of a flat little bone running along that way. So we'll just use the same knife again. So we'll just cut through the top of it first, just very lightly. You just want to just start it. That way you know where the ribs are. They run on a little bit of an angle down towards the front. So then take the flat of your knife and run it in. Again, about an inch at a time. Check the angle of my knife. That way you're not cutting through the ribs. I'm cutting alongside of them. That's what I've done there so far. There's those little bumps, how you went down with the ribs. Then you have to come out, you have to go around the little knobs on each vertebrae. So now on this part, just cut in a little bit deeper. I'm right down at the bottom of it now. So I'm going to turn it around. <coughs> Try and turn it up so you can see it. Then, just you have to go around those little ribs again. It's probably easier if I do it from this way. Let's go out a little bit and feel them. Back down in. Yeah, just go a little bit, just little pieces at a time. Back down in, and you should be at the end of it there. And back down, and it should fall off. There it goes. Strip line. This one's going to be aged, remember? That little piece on there, I'm not really aged that well. Even though it's going to be eaten, I don't want to eat that part. It looks like a little undesirable stuff. So there you got strip loin. What did we do with the strip loin? Cut it into New York steaks. You can cut the tail of it off if you want. You can pretty much see where it is there. Now to go for hamburger. Now if you want to leave it in pieces and cut them later, you can do that too. Just cut it in whatever sections you want. So you could cut it in half if you want to have a big barbecue. You could cut it just into steaks. There's the end where I broke it off the hind quarter when I was out in the field. So it's on. So there you go. We can cut that into steaks. You can cut them either this way or turn it over and cut it. So let's cut them this way. So that. So we can cut them whatever thickness again you want. Three quarters, three quarters, one inch, whatever thickness you desire. Keep it. Should keep it going the same way straight out likely. We just cut again, nice and down, straight through the bottom part. Three quarters, down, saw back and forth, but keep the pressure going down. Keep the pressure going down. That way you get a nice, smooth steak. It's not like